Hi everyone, my name is Kia and I'm a content creator here at Smale and usually I'm inside writing about the cars but today I decided to get inside this 2021 Kia K5. So let's check it out. So we have the GT line Kia with us here and the first thing we noticed are the headlights and the grille in the front. We have the LED strip headlighting. There's this LED strip light that you see blinking here as the turn signal and this just gives it a little bit more of an aggressive look. There's also 18 inch alloy sport wheels. We have blinkers on the side mirror with the black accent. As we come around the back here, we see more black accenting. We even have the black spoiler on the back, the GT line badging, as well as the K5 badging. So getting into the trunk, all you have to do is push this button right under here. And the trunk opens up. We have a good bit of space back here as well. So getting into the car, as long as you have the key fob somewhere on you, all you have to do is push this button here and the doors will unlock. And it's the same for locking the doors. You just push the button and they will all lock. All right, now let's take a look inside. So getting into the back here, we have this soft black leather seating. Um, there's a good bit of space back here too. We have uh, pouches on the back seat. There's two USB ports at the bottom here. We also have two cup holders and an armrest in the middle. All right, now let's check out the front seats. So getting into the car, we see these, again, the black leather seats. We have the black leather steering wheel as well with the flat bottom. There's GT badging on the steering wheel as well as on the back of the seats here. The seats are very comfortable. They have this uh, gray stitching along the edges. So on the door here, we have some chrome accents on the handle and along the door panel. There's also a little bit of texture on this here, which is nice. And for buttons, we have uh, your window buttons. Looks like we have automatic windows in the front. Uh, the lock and unlock buttons and the buttons to adjust your mirrors. So moving on to the inside here, we have your buttons to adjust the brightness of your display. We have the lane keep assist button and your traction control button. And there's also a button to open the trunk from the inside. So on the steering wheel here on the left, we have the speech button. So for your voice commands, there's also controls for your radio, volume up and down to change the song and to answer and hang up calls. So on the right side here, we have a menu button that just cycles through the menus on the screen in front of you. There's also your cruise control button. This is your heated steering wheel button. So in the center console, we have a good amount of space here. It's actually pretty deep. There's also another section here that you can store stuff. In the center, we have our drive mode button, which you just turn to change drive modes. So for the drive modes, there's normal, sport, custom, smart, and the gear shift here to activate it, you just push the button here and put it into whichever gear you need to be in. We have two cup holders on the other side. And in here, there's another uh, spot for storage. I think you could fit a phone in here. There's two USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet. We have your dual zone climate control and either side, you, you can make whichever side you want, whatever degree you want. And moving up to the screen here, you have all your buttons for radio, media, searching in between tracks. Um, and it's also capable of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you have the availability of that as well. We have a 1.6 liter four cylinder turbo engine and an eight speed automatic transmission. And the fuel economy is a combined 31 miles per gallon. So sitting in the seat, I feel pretty comfortable. The steering wheel is a nice uh, distance away. The buttons are also in a nice, uh, easy place to reach all of them. Even the touch screen is a nice distance away too. So I drive a Kia Rio and compared to that, there's definitely a lot more space in here, um, a lot more technology as well. Also, I feel like this has a little bit more speed. When you first push the gas, it goes when you push the gas. 
So as you see, someone's coming into the blind spot and we get a light on the screen. And if you try to turn while there's someone in your blind spot, the system beeps and the light flashes on the, on the mirror as well. So that's to let you know that it's not safe to turn into the lane. So another safety feature we have is lane keep assist and that's the little icon at the bottom left of the screen here. And that's just to keep you centered in the lane while you're driving. So if you start to drift outside of your lane, the system beeps, the steering wheel vibrates a little bit, and it will slightly push you back into the center of the lane. Okay. So now well, let's test out the turning radius. Well, we just made a U-turn and that was very smooth. So the K5 is actually meant to replace the Optima in the Kia lineup. And although it's about the same size, it's a lot sportier. It seems a lot more high tech and it's just a cooler look than the Optima was. Kia also has one of the best warranties on the market. There's a 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty and a five year, 60,000 mile basic warranty and five year, 60,000 mile roadside assistance. So another cool feature is the backup camera. So once you put the car into reverse, you will get a backup camera view of what's behind you on the screen here. And it also has the predictive lines so that you know where the car is going to end up. And with that, it makes it a lot easier to back into a spot. All right, everyone, so that was my first drive of the 2021 Kia K5. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or visit us at smellkia.com or right off Route 30 in Greensburg.